Hey everybody, welcome back to the Cheapo Multimeter Review. Yes, there might be imitators out there, but there's only one genuine Cheapo. That didn't sound right. Cheapo Spotlight, we have an LCR meter rebranded from Hold Peak. In this case, it's coming in as an Infrarider YF4070. LCR meters are great to have on the bench. Everybody needs at least one of them. Um, chances are you're gonna use one at some point in time. The nice thing about something like this is you don't have to spend a lot of money because man, oh man, LCR meters can be really expensive. But in this case, for under 20 bucks, uh, you can get, well, hopefully something pretty decent. Let's okay, find yeah. enough rambling. Let's start off with what we get in the box. Well, first of all, for some head scratching reason, we're getting standard multimeter test leads. Now this is a, a little weird uh, from my point of view. Should be getting something along the lines of these, like a crocodile clip, just because the type of measurements that we want to do with this, remember it's not a multimeter, it's an LCR meter. Inductance, capacitance, resistance, usually at those finite low values, it's all about precision and you're gonna lose that the standard test lead. Also give you a little baby screwdriver here. Um, cutesy, I guess. And as well, you get some instructions. Now, actually, believe it or not, these aren't bad. These aren't bad. Um, they even tell you, or us, what we're getting in terms of a frequency. Go it's there. actually really nice to have a, a finite description of what we're getting feature-wise here. And look at that inductance frequency. There it is, 100 hertz. So no guessing here. We know exactly what frequency it is that we're gonna be testing those components with. Now compared to standard multimeter, another whole peak here, the 760C in this case. Uh, yeah, this is quite small. Um, has those whole peak colors. It does have a nice little boot as well, which is always a bonus. Uh, yeah, so. Not too big, not too small. I'd say it's Sticks up against the competition. Here's a few of the LC meters that I have. Um, Sam on the far left and the X-Tech and as well this SZBJ, which actually was surprisingly a good performer when I reviewed it uh, way now, back Now, sadly, when. lacking on the whole peak is the fact we don't have any of those input terminals. All the other meters here do even this cheap one, but no input terminals on the 4070L. So, gosh darn. That is too bad because when you have a terminal, right away you are um, negating that uh, any sort of side effect or, or, or latency or what have you that you get with a standard lead. So input terminals are always the way I prefer to go when I'm doing anything in You notice as well, or maybe you haven't, but you will. This has a incredible 2000 mega ohm. What the hell am I doing with my brush? Ah, sorry, I was pre, anyway. Okay, so 2000 mega ohm is what we have for the uh, resistance maximum. That is insane. That is a high resistance to test. But anyway, this little hole peak is capable of it. Uh, in stark contrast over here, 200 ohm to 20 mega ohm, 20 mega ohm being the max. So really that uh, SZBJ here on the left can only go as high as this. So wow, you have a very high capacitance capa uh, capacitance resistance capability with the 47. It does ship with that little boot. Um, only covers a part of the entire body, but um, really just gives a little more grip overall. Uh, you still don't want to really want to drop one of these uh, being a sensitive piece of electronic test equipment. Never a good idea. One of my gripes is the, the tilt stand on here just doesn't go out all the way. So it, it yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. It, it kind of, it's awkward. It's awkward to handle. So mm, doing a lot of that. Take a look at the rotary selector switch, HFE or transistor mode. Capacitance from 200 microfarad to 2000 picofarad. Inductance from 20 millihenry to 20 henrys. Finally, resistance from 20 ohms to 2000 mega ohms. Top of the meter, we have our one touch power on off switch. In the middle, we have our platform for the NPN PNP transistor testing. And finally on the right, we have our backlight. Take a look at the bottom of the input jacks. On the far left, we have our resistance input. In the middle, we have our common. Also, we have our inductance and capacitance positive. And on the far right, we have our inductance capacitance negative. I gotta say, I actually like the selector switch. It's got a nice tactile feel. Good clickety click clackety clack. You could even one hand it or one finger it, go figure. Um, I like, it hits those ranges with authority. All in all, pretty nice selector. Okay, here we go. Let's turn it on for the first time. Bada boom, bada bing. Greeted with a standard LCD 2000 count crystal, liquid crystal display. Um, okay, kind of ho-hum, nothing to get too excited about. Let's hit that backlight, shall we? And hey, not bad, not bad. Pretty crisp, nice contrast, a little bit of bleeding over here, but uh, fairly work. Oh my God, there we go. Why, 
Why give us a backlight if you're gonna turn it off in five seconds? Oh, yeah. Anyway. And for the actual testing scenario, I'm gonna use this El Cheapo SMD tweezer. Like I said, I picked up for about 10 bucks. And uh, I'm gonna use it on all three LCR meters, just, just to sort of even the playing field, um, if there's such a thing between a Sanwa and an infrarider. But anyway, that's it, that's all. Quick to the point. Is it any good? Does it work? Okay, let's clear let's this out. out of the way right off the get-go. Um, no other meter here can compare to this little guy in terms of resistance value reading. Now this one goes up to not 200 mega ohm, but a whopping 2000 mega ohm or two giga ohm. It's absolutely ludicrous. So if you do any sort of high resistance testing, having a meter like this in your arsenal is pretty darn important. I mean, what can I say? Very few meters, few and far between. Doesn't matter if they're expensive or cheap. It's hard to find a meter that measures up to two gig ohms worth of resistance. Anyway, the little 4070 does. Let's see how good it is. Right now, inside of it, uh, I've got a 1000 mega ohm thick film resistor. And if you can see, I'll just kind of scroll down there and I've got it right in that resistance input right there. So let's just switch it now to the 2000 mega ohm setting. Look at that, yeah, beauty, beauty, beauty. Now, according to the specs, in terms of resistance accuracy, this is good plus or minus 10% with a reading plus 35 digits. So, hey, you know, <laughs> spot on pretty well. Um, 1000 mega ohm, there you go. Love Absolutely it. love it. Welcome back to another multimeter. Vent of the week. This week's vent, oh my gosh, you know what's so true? Smart multimeters that aren't so smart. It's gotta be one of the biggest buzzwords in multimeter history. Smart meters, what the hell are they anyway? Some of them take so long to range, you might as well say, why bother? <laughs> Touch sensitive, you say. Uh-huh, so was my first girlfriend. Honking huge screens with nothing on them. What the hell? Smart multimeters, eh? What was I using before, a dumb one? Multimeters are test instruments, plain and simple. Smart or not, hey, it's a bunch of baloney. They're all smart. Question is, are you? At the end of the day, don't buy all the hype. Smart on a multimeter means absolutely nothing. What really is important is who's behind it. Okay, here we go, starting off with the Sanwa. And I've got that frequency set to 100 Hertz. As you can see, multiple frequencies available with the Sanwa, unlike the 4070. Okay, here we go, one millihenry. And the Sanwa comes up pretty darn close. 1,000 microhenry, here we go, 2.2 .2 millihenry. Coming in as 2.1, wow, that is so close. 3.3, .3 coming as 3.0. And finally, 4.7 millihenry coming in as 4.6, so Wow, that just shows you how nice and accurate the Sanwa is. Okay, here we are now with the 4070L Hold Peak, aka Infrarider, coming in at 1.2 millihenry, not too shabby, too shabby at all. 2.2 millihenry coming up as 2.5, definitely a lot higher than the Sanwa. 3.3 coming in as 3.8, wow, that is pretty high. And finally, the 4.7 millihenry, coming in at a whopping 5.5, so much, much higher readings here on the 4070. Now the SDAT BJ 4070, one millihenry coming in as 1.2, over to the 2.2 .2 millihenry coming in at 2.6, a little on the high side as well, 3.3 .3 millihenry coming in at 3.9, and finally 4.7 millihenry coming in once again pretty high compared to that Sanwa at 5.4 so pretty close in terms of overall uh, inductance readings along with the 4070 from Whole Peak. Next up I've got a toroid wire round inductor and this is valued at around 35 millihenry. Let's start off with the 4070 from SZBJ see what we get and it's coming in kind of low at 27.8 Sanwa is next. And 37.4 for the Sanwa. And finally, the 4070L coming in at 31.3 millihenry. So all oh, were sort of in the ballpark, but uh, once again, that Sanwa 
takes the win. The last component we're going to test is this one microfarad capacitor. And uh, here's Mr. Sano again showing off, coming in at 998 nanofarads. Let's just press hold. And the 4070 from SFBJ, pretty darn good, 1.04. A microfarad so pretty darn close finally let's try the 4070 from whole peak and yeah no problems here pretty well spot on with the SDBJ 1.04 for the 4070 L from whole peak so hey not too shabby all in all pretty good I mean really no comparison for the Sanwa it's in a different league altogether but uh, considering the price and uh, the performance, really no complaints. Okay, let's take a look at the inside. Nice to see we have a threaded insert for the nine volt battery compartment. Okay, here we are on the inside, teardown time. Let's start off at the bottom of those input jacks. Uh, soldered in there, they are of the split variety, as you can see. Um, solder wise, not too bad. There is a lot of flux on this board, though, a lot of flux on this PCB. Also, at the bottom, you'll notice we have one PTC, and that's actually on the resistance side of things. So, moving up the board, we have an op amp uh, that is from Texas Instruments, and over here we have the HEF40. Uh, 93BT, that is a two input NAND Schmidt trigger, basically a, a gate. And right beside that, we have the CD4066BP, that's an analog signal switching multiplexer. Um, another op amp over here at the top, LM358, but uh, overall, pretty sparse pickings, all SMD except for that one capacitor here. Look at the date on this, 2013, May 9th. Wow, and this was purchased about two months ago. So these things never go out of style. Now it is revision eight, so this has gone through a lot of revisions. But yeah, lo and behold, there's the HP. It is a hold peak, the 4070 LT labeled here. On the opposite side, there's the rotary selector tracks and they are greased. A little bit of dial dielectric is on there. Uh, really nice to see. But once again, if you take a close look, you can see a lot of this residue, a lot of the PCB here has this uh, weird flux all over it. So not the cleanest board out there. Also, if you look at that soldering job, not the greatest. Here we have a decent looking blob, but over here, uh, kind of lacking. So uh, not a lot of consistency in terms of the overall soldering. Also at the top of the board here is that transistor tester inlay. And that is the uh, on off and switch. hiding beneath that display strip is the main IC over here. Here are the zebra headers, two elastomars that uh, makes contact uh, with the service of the PCB over here, giving us that display reading. As well, we have a couple of soft touch buttons, and there are the uh, pads that make contact with the selector switch one, two, three, four, five, six. And this is one of those older style varieties where we have the balls and the springs there you can see one of the balls just hanging out there saying howdy doody good to see you all in all i'm um, not a bad interior a little bit on the messy side but hey this is a cheap meter so you know beggars can't be choosers all right gonna put everything back together come back with my closing thoughts closing thoughts of the infrarider yf 4070l aka the hold peak 4070l this is not a bad cheapo hey everybody needs an lcr meter and you don't have to spend big bucks if you don't have to. Let's face it, unless you're working for NASA, sometimes you don't need that high, high precision. This is where the whole Peak 4070 has you covered. It does a lot for a little. A whopping two giga ohm range, that's almost unheard of on any multimeter in this day and age. Accuracy wise, definitely not as good as some of the big names, but hey, once again, for the little money you're spending, you can't expect everything. If you get this meter, Throw out the leads, they're pretty well useless. Get yourself a good set of crocodile clips, what have you, and you're gonna be good to go. Hey, I use those cheap SMD clips for the review on every meter. And you know what, they didn't do a bad job. If you wanna pay a little more money, the 4070 from SZBJ for me is the better choice. The Infrarider, AK Whole Peak 4070L LCR meter gets a solid three out of five stars. Hey, it's cheap, it's effective, and you know what? It's gonna do the job. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. To the next one, keep on testing.